In this video, we will learn how to install i3. We find ourselves in a predicament. Recently, the i3 gaps project has been merged with the original i3 package, not long ago, they were independent packages. This has happened in version 4.22, and as you can already deduce, in Debian 11 that package is not available. Version 4.22 is only available for Debian 12, so we have to decide whether to upgrade the system or to compile the latest version of i3. This is a funny thing, since almost all other distributions like Fedora, or even OpenSUSE, have the latest version of i3 available. The reason for this is because Debian is designed to be super stable, since it is one of the most used distros and servers. Since Debian 12 is thought to be released in a stable way in the middle of the year, it seems to me that the simplest thing would be to update the system, but if this would not be this way, we would have to compile the code. So, we proceed to update the system. We open the sources.list file and add the repository indicated here. Since I am in Mexico, I am going to use the corresponding mirror. I want to emphasize that we are enabling these repositories that technically are unstable because Debian 12 is thought to be released in a few months. And since Debian is very stable, I have the confidence that still nothing is going to break. Like any system upgrade, you should make backups. Having said that we proceed with the system upgrade. I am getting this problem. Whenever you have this kind of problem, all you have to do is search for the error on Google or ChatGPT, you will almost always find an immediate answer. In this case, we have to update a package. This process can take a while. At a certain point in the installation it will ask us if we want to use the current configuration of the sudoers file, that is, the file where access to the sudo command is controlled. Since we are the owners of the system there is no need to change it, so we say keep the current version. To finish we simply reboot the system. Ready, we can notice that the system has been updated without any problem. We see that now we can install the latest version of i3, so we proceed with the installation. Once installed, we restart the system again. When you reboot you have to change the window manager you are going to use, this changes depending on the desktop manager you are using. Find a way to change your desktop manager to i3. If you don't change it, you will log in with the desktop environment you had before. When you log in you will see this window, where i3 will ask you if you want to create a default configuration. We say yes and then it will ask us which key we want to define as the mod key. You can define the alt key or the windows key, as you prefer. As I said before, this is not a course about i3, so I am not going to explain how to use it, but how to configure it. The configuration file can be found at this address. Here you can change the default settings. For the moment, we will leave this file untouched. The first thing we have to do is to change the default terminal that will use i3. We do this by defining an environment variable called terminal. In the case of Debian, we have to create a configuration file in the home called xsession.rc, and in the rest of distributions, we have to create an xsession or sprofile file. These files are executed when the graphical server is initialized, so here we can define other things that we want to be executed at login.
we give execute permissions to this file and proceed to reboot the system. And that's it, if we did everything correctly, our default terminal will have changed. In the next video, we will learn how to configure my favorite theme of i3, the bar, and transparencies.